Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Eddie Elfenbein's top 25 stocks to buy for 2022. Now I've only recently come across Eddie Elfenbein through the We Study Billionaires podcast, which I highly recommend. They get a number of very good investors um, on their podcast um, to share their views on what they're currently investing in and just their philosophies and strategies around investing. They also had a great episode with Guy Spear recently as well. I'll leave a link in the description below to their podcast. But more in today's video, we're going to be focusing on these top 25 stocks that Eddie Elfenbein um, has got in the portfolio for this coming year. Now, for those that aren't aware, Eddie Elfenbein runs an ETF uh, called CWS, is the ticket code, and he's been running this for around 17 years now. And since inception, they have beat the S&P by 61%, which is a pretty good feat, especially with the S&P has been running pretty hard these last sort of 10 to 15 years as well. Now, how he runs his portfolio is every year he releases these top 25 stocks that he will buy for that year. Um, and then at the end of that year, he rebalances it by se selling five positions and adding five positions as well. So there's a lot of the stocks have been in the portfolio for a number of years as well. Um, but we're going to have a look at this year's latest buy list. And in particular, there's one company that he sort of recommends, not so much recommends, but he discusses at the end of the podcast. Trey, the interviewer, asks him, you know, what's your sort of top pick across these 25? He dances around a little bit. Uh, but he does say one particular company, so we're going to have a quick look at that as well, which is one of his top um, sort of recommendations for this coming year, and his reasonings behind why he likes that as well. Uh, but I definitely recommend you check out this podcast if you wanted to learn a little bit more about uh, Eddie and just his style of investing, very similar to um, you know a lot of these other value investors that we like to follow as well. Um, and with that said, let's jump on over to have a quick look at his buy list for this year. So the Crossing Wall Street buy list contains 25 stocks. Um, he's provided stocks name, ticket price, current price, year to date, return, and a brief description. Um, and he changes the buy list once a year on January 1st. After that, the buy list is set for the next 12 months. In late December, he will unveil next year's list. So throughout the space of the year, there's no sort of adding or trimming or you know removing in these positions. They just sit there for that entire year. So Eddie also has a very similar sort of approach to Joel Greenblatt. Um, which is the magic formula, you know, where he buys a parcel of stocks throughout the space of the year, and then he, he runs a very screen on those basically low PE multiples and high return on assets. Whereas Eddie, you know, he, he, he may run some sort of a screen on this. He didn't really break down in great detail how he comes across these companies, um, but he has a lot more of a deeper understanding of these companies rather than just running a screen and sort of having that real analytical approach to it. He actually does a lot more research on these particular companies. So let's just run down and have a quick look at some of these companies within the 2022 buy list. There's probably a few names on here you're familiar with. A lot of them are sort of value-based companies as well, not huge sort of growth stocks or anything like that, which generally do quite well in a high inflationary environment, generally speaking. Um, I'm not familiar with many of these companies, to be honest, on this list, but you'll see a few like Moody's, for example, which he briefly discussed uh, in the podcast. You see that in a number of different sort of Value Investors Portfolios, there's a number of other sort of companies here. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below so you guys can dig in. Definitely drop in the comments below if there's any of these companies that you're um, very bullish on. I'd love to do a bit more research on that as well. Um, the one we're going to be looking at today is Miller Industries, which is one that Eddie sort of, at the end of the podcast, you know, Trey asked him, what's your uh, sort of top pick on this top 25? And he sort of danced around the, the, uh, the topic a little bit, but he did say he did quite like Miller. It is a very um, low market cap on this company. Um, and the founder run as well. He's a slight, uh, has around 2.5% ownership from memory. But we'll check out that in a minute as well. So this is the top 25 list, and here is how the buy lists have been done over the last uh, 16 years or 17 years. And as you can see, the buy list total return has been just shy of that 500%, um, whereas the S&P has returned 428%. So it is beating the S&P, which is a pretty big feat in itself. Um, especially when the SMB has been on such a bull run these last sort of 10 to 15 years as well. And then you can go back and look at these other previous years' buy lists as well if you're interested to learn a little bit more about the other um, years' buy lists. So here on the list, they have a very basic overview of the company. We're going to jump in and have a quick look at Miller. So he recommends you buy it below $40. Obviously, do your own research around this as well. Don't just sort of look at that and think, bang, it's below $40. I want to buy that. Um, Year to date, it's currently down to around just uh, three and a half percent. So Miller makes and sells towing and recovery equipment, and no analysts follow it. Like I said, it's this very small company, around about three hundred fifty million market cap. Um, let's now definitely, I recommend following Eddie over on Twitter as well. Um, I've only recently started following on Twitter as well. I'm only pretty new to Twitter myself, 
um, definitely jump in and give us a follow though on Twitter if you're interested. I haven't do, I'm not very active on Twitter, but I do follow quite a few um, good investors on Twitter as well. So let's jump over and have a look at Miller Industries, just a very high level look through QuickFS. I have not done a deep dive on Miller at all, I only spent about 10 minutes having a quick look over some of these sort of high level numbers for Miller to see what um, Eddie sees within the company. So like I said, current market cap is 367 million, enterprise value coming in at 317 million. Um, and just a quick business description, like I said, it's uh, more towing sort of recovery equipment, fairly basic business, um, nothing too, too sort of strenuous there to understand. And now if we just have a look at some of the key stats here, PE uh, ratio is coming in just shy of 15, 14.4, price to book 1.3, price to sales at 0.5, enterprise value to sales coming in at 0.5 as well. Um, the 10 year median returns for the company, return on assets 7.3%, return on equity 11.1% and return on investor capital 10.9%. Now that's over that magical 10% that Phil Town likes to see um, return on investor capital. So it's good to see that. Pretty low um, margins for, on the business, to be honest. Gross profits around that 11.3%, EBIT 5.2, uh, pre tax income 5.1, and free cash flow 1.1. These are 10 year average margins. Now, if we just look over the last 10 years, revenue, it has been growing. Um, 2020 has obviously pulled back. I'm not too sure what's caused that. Obviously, COVID's probably had some play in that as well. Revenue growth, pretty steady as you can see, slight pullback in 2020 there. Uh, gross profits, fairly steady as well. Um, gross margins, as you can see across the board, sort of around that 11, 12%. So it's good to see good consistent gross margins there. Operating profits, fairly consistent as well. Operating margins, bouncing around a little bit, but uh, not too bad as well. Earnings per share, 2011, they looked like they were doing quite well. And then it dropped back a bit. Uh, on an earnings per share basis, and currently in 2020 it was $2.62. Uh, dividends though, they pay around a 2% dividend, um, but we'll jump on and have a look at that in a second. So you can see their short term assets are well covered by their short term liabilities. So they have just shy of 300 million in short term assets, whereas their short term liabilities, this is debts and liabilities payable within 12 months, is only 113.72 million. Um, a long-term assets is coming in at 111.69 million, and their long-term liabilities is only 5 million. So pretty solid um, balance sheet there for Mill Industries. So the dividend currently is around the 2.18% current dividend payout. So especially if you're chasing those dividends, something to be worthy of there. I think at current payout to shareholders is only 32% as well, um, which is good to see. They're not paying out all their earnings, so they can reinvest some of those earnings back into the business to grow the business. Management, so they have a very experienced management team, average uh, tenure is of nine and a half years. CEO current is Jeff Badgley, which is shared with um, Mr. Miller himself. Um, so William Miller, the founder and executive chairman, has been at the company for 27.75 years. Um, fairly modest um, salaries there as well by the looks of things. And he shares that position with Jeffrey Badgley by, um, just from having a quick look here on Sibley Wall Street, co-chief CEO as well. So pretty good management. Well, just after a very quick look, I'd like to, I wanna read over some of the more reports on this. Drop in the comments below if you guys have heard of Mill Industries or you're familiar with the company or you've looked into them, I'd love to know a bit more or find some good sort of resources around there. Like I'm just sitting there having a real quick look here at the moment. Um, no major insider trading volume at the moment. Ownership breakdown, a lot of institutions do own this particular company and then individual insiders. So we see Mr. Miller, the founder, currently owns around two and a half, two point five nine percent of the shares outstanding for Miller Industries, around current value of just shy of ten million there. So there we have it, guys. Just a very high level look over Miller Industries. I'd love to hear from you guys. Have you are you familiar with Miller? Um, you know, is it a company you've looked at before, or even Eddie? Have you looked at um, the, the buy list before, anything like that? Like I said, it's all fairly new to me. I hadn't heard of them myself personally. Um, but it was a great podcast. Like I said, I highly recommend you go over and listen to the podcast as well if you're interested to learn a little bit more about Eddie and his top 25 stocks to buy for 2022. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description below um, to the podcast, also his website. He also has a newsletter on Substack as well, which I've recently just subscribed to that. Um, he has both a paid model and a free model. I've only signed up to the free model at this stage. Um, and like I said, there's you know, a number of different stocks here. I haven't looked at in any of these in great detail at all. First one I sort of looked at was Miller just because that's the one he sort of likes. And for good reason, you know, it's a smaller market cap. 
um, no analysts are following it. You know, so there we have it, guys. Just a very high level look over Miller Industries. I'd love to hear from you guys. Have you heard of Miller Industries? Is it, is it a company on your radar? Or have you been Eddie? Have you, have you, have you familiar with his 25 companies um, that he recommends every year? And obviously, it's been doing quite well. So it's definitely someone we should be paying attention to, I feel. Or a place just to get some good ideas as well, if you're struggling for ideas at the moment. I seem to have a lot of ideas at the moment. Um, so it's not something that I'm sort of struggling with at the moment. It's just finding the time to do the research on the companies is where I'm struggling at the moment. Um, they also have a good little write-up on value investors, but it dates back to 2009 for Miller as well, but definitely worth a read. If you're interested to learn, learn a little bit more about Miller Industries as well. Um, by no means is this a buy recommendation. Like I said, I've done very little research on this company. I've only sort of looked at them um, for about half an hour or so. Um, but definitely worth doing a bit more digging, I feel. Anyway, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap us up today. Like I said, um, I'll leave a link to the, everything in the description below to this latest 25 stocks that he recommends. And I highly recommend going over and checking out the podcast if you're not familiar with the Billionaires um, podcast, the We Study Billionaires podcast. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap us up for today. Stay safe, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.